Never Stop Learning, week 208. We're going to take a quick look at the Magnetic Lasso tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. All right, so the way you activate this is you go into the Tools panel over in the upper left. You're going to find the Lasso tool. Just click and hold. At the bottom of that same stack, you're going to find the Magnetic Lasso tool. Once I release, you notice that my cursor changes up. That tells me that the tool has been activated and it's ready to go. Now, the way you work with this guy is, I'm going to make a selection around this pig, starting from the upper right. I'm going to click once and release. So currently, I'm not pressing down the mouse. I'm just moving my mouse around. And wherever the cursor goes, that's where it's going to lay down some anchor points and paths to create a selection. Now, what Photoshop is actually doing is, it's analyzing the pixel information around my cursor. And wherever it finds the most contrast, that's where it's going to lay down an anchor point. I could also force it to lay one down by just clicking. And once I'm done, I'm going to hit return on my keyboard. And that's going to create a selection for us. All right, so over in the options bar up at the top, by default, it's set to new selection. Now, what that means is if I come back in here and use the magnetic lasso tool again, it's going to create a new selection, but it's going to eliminate this selection that we have established. All right, because I have a selection in here, we could also add to our selection, subtract from it, and we could also intersect with an existing selection. All right, to the right of that, we have these feather controls. If I click and drag towards the right, I'm introducing a higher feathering value. I could also come in here and enter in whichever value I need. I'm going to leave mine set to zero because what this does is uh, the feathering is actually going to add a feather automatically to any selection you create with this tool. I actually do not want it to add a feathering around my selection, so I'm going to leave mine set to zero for now. All right, just to the right of that, we have this option here. Now, this is going to smooth the edge transition for us. So you might have remembered uh, anti-aliasing. It's pretty much the same thing. If you want it to be more rigid, just uh, turn this guy off. I like to leave mine turned on so I could have a smoother edge. Next to that, we have width, and currently it's set to 10 pixels. So what is this actually controlling? Well, I'm going to hit Command D on my keyboard to get rid of that selection. Now, let's take a look at that cursor again. It looks like an arrow with a little bit of a lasso tool and a magnet right there. All right, I'm going to hit the Caps Lock key, and notice it changed. All right, so now it's like a circle, but it's a really tiny circle. If we were to increase the value over there where it says width, that circle is going to increase in size. So let's see how we do that. Back over here in the options bar, right here over width, I'm going to click and drag with the scrubby slider. All right, now I have this circle around my cursor. I could also enter in a new value in here. All right, so now I have a 50 pixel value, so it's a bigger circle. And we could also use our keyboard shortcuts, and that's going to be the bracket keys. So if I want a larger brush, I'm going to use the right bracket key, the closed bracket key. Now, if I want to reduce the size, I'll use the one on the left, the open bracket key. All right, and that's going to back off on the size for me. Now, the reason this is important is this is the area that Photoshop is going to use to analyze and find out where the highest contrast is happening so it can lay down those anchor points and paths for you. All right, so now that I have a larger width area, in the upper right, I'm going to click and then just move my cursor around. And this time, I don't have to do it as slow as I did earlier because I have that large area in there. All right, once I'm done, return. And there you go, so I have that new selection. So make any kind of changes you need to right here in the width. If you need a smaller area, just back off on it a little bit. All right, I'm going to turn off the caps lock. Next, we have contrast. All right, if we were to increase the contrast value, that means that Photoshop would need to see a higher contrast value between pixels for it to lay down those anchor points and paths. If I were to back off on this, then it wouldn't need such a high contrast value. All right, over here we have frequency. So I'm going to increase this frequency all the way to 100 and deselect this guy. All right, in the upper right, I'm going to click once and then just move my mouse around this. All right, notice how many anchor points we're laying down here. All right, a lot more than what we had earlier. All right, enter to finish that guy off, Command D, and that's going to deselect this. Back in the top, for frequency, I'm going to bring this down to zero. All right, I'm going to click and then move this around. This time, notice I don't have as many anchor points as we had earlier. All right, so we could also delete some of these guys just by hitting delete. 
you notice it's going to remove the last anchor point you laid down. All right, I'm going to draw out a new selection. Return. All right, great. Back in the options bar. All right, this option we have here it says use tablet pressure to change pen width. All right, so if you press down harder, it's going to make changes to your pen width right over here for you. Because I have a selection here, I also have access to refine edge. When I click on that, it's going to help me out to create a cleaner selection than the one I already have established there. I'm going to hit Command D to get out of that. And there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at the Magnetic Lasso tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015.